Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm still an Adamaniac. For new adventures of Batman. Oh, by the way, she's back there in her favorite corner. She's in a mood today. Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are driving Barbara Gordon to a thing somewhere, and they're doing a good job of keeping her guessing. Never mind the mystery thing, I'll kick back and enjoy the music. Bruce, are you sure you know where you're going? Relax, Barbara, just leave it to me. You're just a girl, you wouldn't understand anyway. Why all the mystery? Where are we going anyway? There, there's the house. Let's go. The date wouldn't happen to be October 31st, would it? For heaven's sake, Bruce, can't you tell me what this is all about? I... What was that? It wasn't a mouse. Okay, Barbara, that gave it away. We're here so you can adopt a cat. Oh, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> no, not that one. Barbara could never afford to feed one that size. So what's really up with the Dracula-style spook house and the bad Boris Karloff impression? Barbara, I'd like you to meet Professor Norquist. Prepare yourselves for an amazing experience. Before you lies the greatest boon to ecology, the Norquist Inert Matter Converter. By inert matter, he means garbage, much of which isn't really inert, especially when some bacteria get to it. But I won't quibble over words much. The trash or any inert matter is fed into the disintegrator, then it is fed into the converter. And presto! Why, it looks like silk. It is silk. With the right combination of buttons, he can produce any kind of fabric you want. Not only will his invention be a great thing for the fashion industry, it'll help clean up the planet in the process. Earth will look good and smell good. What's going on? What's going on? What happened to the lights? Somebody turn on the lights. Hey, what's quickly? Somebody turn on the lights. Hey, hey, Except if Catwoman does that. On the other hand, she wants to do the same thing with it that the professor was going to do. She just wants to get filthy rich in the process. I suppose that's a small price to pay for a clean planet and fancy clothes. Now, Catwoman has time for a quick change. As long as she's not changing into that ugly green outfit she wore in the last show, it shouldn't be too bad. Batgirl? Yes, Batgirl is through fighting crime. This converter shall make me rich. Do you hear? <laughs> I stand chastised. She even has a replica of the Batgirl cycle. Later, the incognito trio are explaining to Commissioner Gordon that it couldn't have been the real Batgirl. She wouldn't do that. She also has a perfect alibi. She just can't tell anybody what it is. Well, it's all too baffling to me. There's only one person in the world who could figure out a mess like this. Batman. Hello, let me talk to Batman, please. Batman speaking. Bruce and Dick have a fair idea who that is, and suddenly they have somewhere else to be. So does Barbara. Batmite is ready to head down there and help, so let's let him give us a little comedy relief. With a bit of help from Robin, who, like all TV personalities, doesn't have the good sense just to step aside and let the danger go by. Once that situation is under control, as if Batmite is ever under control, it's time to ask the computer who's impersonating Batgirl. Considering there's been exactly one recurring female criminal in Gotham City since Batman first appeared on the scene, the list should be a fairly short one. To be is not to be. That is the answer. I did not expect it to be that short. 
Of course. I don't see, Batman. Of course you see. Think, Robin. What would happen if you took the B out of Batgirl? You get At Girl. No, if you replace the B with a C, you get Catwoman. Except you get Cat Girl, and we won't mention that. No, I have no idea why the Bat Computer talks in riddles now. Batman here. <laughs> Catwoman. I knew they had that little romance thing going at the end of Julie Newmar's run as Catwoman, but I didn't realize they went so far as to exchange phone numbers. She's calling to let him know that Batgirl is walking into a trap she set up. But Catwoman won't have to do anything. The police will do it all. Activate the Batascope. There. That's Batgirl's signal now. Unfortunately, since the Batascope picks up all things Bat-related and it was getting toward the end of the day and the city's Bat population was waking up for the night, suddenly the Batascope looked like this. Batgirl was never found. Commissioner Gordon? Yes, what is it? If you want to catch Batgirl with the goods, send a few of your Keystone Cops to Shrum's abandoned warehouse. It's a city ordinance that every business employing more than 20 people must have an abandoned warehouse on the waterfront. They hand out heavy fines for non-compliance. I like the new Catwoman. Her costume is better, her mask is more believable, even though if she really wants to hide her identity, she needs to do something with the hair. Her voice is much better and she doesn't have the annoying some country that doesn't exist accent. We dropped the romantic angle between her and Batman way back in the Eartha Kid episodes, and I think we can all guess why. But we don't need it here. She can be a pure villain and still be pleasant to watch, just like any of the other villains. Here's what I think happened. Filmation got tons of feedback about the other show, and especially about the big four villains. The consensus? Joker and Penguin can stay just like they are. Do something about Catwoman's god-awful costume and irritating voice, and she'll be fine. Dump that Riddler altogether, he gets tiring to listen. Two. And that's what they did. The Riddler doesn't appear in this series at all. Which is fine with me. If you can't get either Frank Gorshin or John Aston to do the voice, it's hardly worth the bother anyway. So that's my theory. People told Filmation how to make the villains better, and they listened. Now, to use my catnetic force field to capture the Batcopter. A force field is supposed to keep things out of other things or keep things in another thing. I'm not sure what a force field in a missile is supposed to do. I've got to be careful. That mysterious call I got could be the sort of thing Catwoman might try. A mysterious, anonymous call to go to an abandoned warehouse by yourself. You know what that means? Probably nothing. Let's walk into it face first. If I don't clear my name, the police will be after me. Really, Filmation? You were okay with that. I would hope she has some gadgets to deal with this thing. My! <laughs> what big electric eyes you have! You missed me by a whisker. A cat's whisker, that is. Dumb puns aren't working. Try another gadget. Holy high altitude, Batman! It's still in our tail! Activate the multiple image deflection ray! Right! <laughs> Now we know where the rebel leader in Halo 2 got the idea. The next day, a barge company and a logging company received sizable checks from the Wayne Foundation. They never figured out why, since it was their competitor stuff that got blown up. again sometime. Okay, the danger is past. 
So, Batgirl, I see you've been busy with the professor's invention. In typical fashion, she can't seem to spit out the word Catwoman, so she'll do the next best thing. Halt! She couldn't do that when that other thing was chasing her? Unfortunately, the street is full of cops. Time to find a different route. Don't worry, bad girl. I'll catch you. That might. Oh, no. Not now. She doesn't have to hold on to him like that. He poofed in here, he can poof out. But the inconsistency of that whole thing is one of the few things I don't like about this show. Falling isn't a problem for him. Not only can he just vanish and reappear on the ground, we've seen him hover in midair so he can do that too. Batgirl won't think about that and her drain pipe has just about had it. Batman! Batman, how did you know about this? Batman always knows. Robin, lower the bat swing. Batman tells the commissioner that he's taking Batgirl to police headquarters. Batgirl says thanks a bunch. Of course. We'll make a little detour on the way. You mean to? Right. To Catwoman's hideout. Great idea. You can leave Batmite in charge of the helicopter while you guys go take care of the evildoers. But where are they? Mammoth fur and fashion sale. Fantastic bargains at the convention center. The professor's machine can even produce mammoth fur. Biologists all over the world bought up as much of that as she could crank out. <laughs> and this is just the beginning. <laughs> Speed up the machines. You did tell her to do that. They're drowning in purple fabric, but here comes Batman to the rescue. Only trouble is, even with everything else that's going on, she doesn't want to be rescued. Holy rockets, Batmite! Look at that! Fortunately, Batman and Batgirl landed on that part of the convention center. And now, let's steer a course for police headquarters. Something's wrong with this wheel. I can't control it. It has a severe case of bats in the belfry. That's why it's going crazy. So, Commissioner, there's your real crook. Catwoman? <laughs> so, she tried to frame you for stealing the invention, eh, Batgirl? That's right, Commissioner. And despite all the good I've done for this city and for you personally, you were stupid enough to believe it and were prepared to throw me in jail. Well done, Commissioner. Then she shot him in the face with laughing powder and the three of them left him there rolling around on the street. Chief O'Hara took the opportunity to try out his new comedy routine. He was delighted when the Commissioner laughed at everything. Well, she'll have plenty of time to think things over. In that case, I'll never get into trouble. I never think anything over. <laughs> I admit I was a little disappointed. I wanted Batmite to save the day. When he and Robin spotted the rocket thing getting away, he could poof over there, grab the machine, and poof back with it or poof over there and mess with the controls until Catwoman gives up. I wanted him to succeed in catching the big bad. I'm learning to like him. He felt a little overdone at first, but once we got him established, we haven't overused him. His appearances are carefully scripted and crafted. My one and only gripe is the inconsistency about his abilities. But in spite of that, he's fun. And since this show was aimed at children, I suspect they enjoyed his antics even more than I'm enjoying them. As a result, he was a good addition. And now I'm trying to picture who might have played him if they figured out how to have him in the live action show. Gonna have to ponder that one for a while. I'm Irving and I'm still an Adamaniac.